All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Insight mod, which is being made by form user Kaneto. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a replica of the Insight mission for Kerbal Space Program, and it is pretty cool, giving you all the parts necessary to, well, recreate Insight. So let's jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what we do get. Now, I should mention right off the bat here, this is still a work in progress mod, so there are a few things that are a bit yeah at the moment, but all in all, this thing's pretty cool, especially with the main parts. Let's get going with it. We'll grab the, for change of pace, the Probobodyne HECS2 for size comparison today, and then turn on our Janitor's Closet mod filter, just leaving on Kaneto. And we'll start with the I think the best part in the entire thing, the actual InSight lander. And this thing is gorgeous. Now you'll notice it only has sort of one attachment point, or attachment node rather, that's uh, in line, and that's at the top. And that's for a specific reason for uh, some of the other parts, like the heat shield, etc., with how it functions. So for now, we're going to kind of pop that under there for the time being to take a look. And as you can see, it is beautifully detailed. I love this thing. It is awesome. It's a very beautifully made recreation of the inside lander and of course has extendable landing legs right there which are very nice and it's just cool looking with a lot of great detail to the entire thing. Now it does have a couple of other attachment points on it for various parts like the solar panels, uh, antennae, etc. As you can see those three at, uh, different points that we have there and uh, other than that let's take a look at the full stats it is of course an unmanned command pod it is a probe after all and has a built-in data transmitter a built-in engine producing 45 kilonewtons of max thrust in vacuum with liquid fuel and oxidized resin fuel it does have of course a reaction wheel SAS a number of experiments including of course a run heat flow probe sound analysis pressure data observed material bay and of course log temperature and finally, has a battery of 150 electric charge, a fuel tank of uh, 90 liquid fuel, and 110 oxidizer. And again, is just gorgeous. I really do like this thing. Now, besides this, we also do have the Marco A and B, which are two small Mars Cube 1 spacecraft, which are little microsatellites, 6U CubeSats in size. And uh, they were meant, of course, to fly along with the mission to be released and, well, you know, be tiny little micro CubeSats around Mars. And we have uh, the both of them here. As you can see, a very, very tiny tiny little things, and uh, with a number of attachment points for their antennae and solar panels that we'll see uh, later on, and they are just cool little microsats. I very much like these parts. Now, both of them have the same stats, being, of course, again, unmanned, with a data transmitter, a small little engine producing three kilonewtons of max thrust with liquid fuel and oxidizer, having a reaction wheel, SAS, 150 electric charge, 18 liquid fuel, and 22 oxidizer. Very, very cool little parts, but let's check those off. And you know what? We'll leave this on for now, but we'll flip it upside down and pop it on the top and then zoom out to take a look at our next parts in the fuel tanks category. And the first one we have here is the Insight Lower Stage, which is the first part on here that, you know, like I just said moments ago, this is work in progress. And this has a thing I really hope gets um, adjusted moving forward. As you can see, this very large fuel tank has a built-in particle effect to, you know, sort of mimic the cryo engine sort of status, etc. of, you know, the release of gases. And we have looked at mods in the past that actually create this effect, and I very much like them. But here's the problem with this one. You can't toggle it. It's just always on, and is quite opaque and large. If it was a bit less dense and could be toggled, I'd actually love this. But how it is right now, I really hope it does change. But again, this is work in progress, so hopefully this does get adjusted, and it is included in a few other parts as well, and kind of just makes it look a bit odd when it's on the launch pad, and since it is always on, it's even going when you're launching into space. It's harder to see 
but it is still noticeable. But besides that, this fuel tank is freaking awesome, as it's not just a fuel tank. Oh god, click and stay with the stats. There we go. It has a built-in solid rocket boosters to help move it away from the rest of the rocket when you do release it, and they'll produce 90 kilonewtons of thrust. It also has a built-in reaction wheel, and holds 3,240 liquid fuel and 3,960 oxidizer, and 7 solid fuel for those little solid rocket boosters. So it's a very cool and useful Full fuel tank. I just hope that this uh, particle effect gets adjusted a bit. Now, the next fuel tank that we have is the inside upper stage. If we pop that on there, of course, this one being a lot smaller, but has all the cool insignia for the inside mission. And this one again has a reaction wheel on board with liquid fuel of 1,440 and oxidizer of 1,760. Now, let's uh, zoom in a bit here and move on to the next category of engines, where the first one we have have is the Insight Cruise Engine. This one, of course, sort of going along with the top stage of the Insight Lander. We'll pop it on here, though. And, ooh, kind of kind of floats a bit in there. Never mind. Let's hold on. Pop that off. It'll be easier to see it right there. Kind of ish. Again, it kind of fits with the other parts it's meant to go with, so it's kind of fitting a bit awkwardly here. Yes, there we go. Upside down works better. But again, very nicely detailed, kind of nice and shiny, has a lot of good bits and bobs to it. And as for its stats, it has a built-in alternator producing electric charge and has an engine producing 70 kilonewtons of thrust in vacuum using a monopropellant and a gimbling range of 2 degrees. Very, very nice, cool little engine. Now, the next one we have is a bit larger, uh, as it does go, of course, with the the main fuel tank. And this is the lower stage engine, the RD-180. And this one has that uh, particle effect again that you cannot toggle. And this, uh, again, has an alternator built in, produces 1,500 kilonewtons of max thrust in vacuum, with an ISP max of 310, a liquid fuel and oxidizer, and has a vectoring range of 2 degrees. Very nice, good details to it, all in all, cool engine. Now the next one we have is the upper stage engine, the LR10A42, which this one a lot, a lot smaller, again has that particle effect, uh, nice small little engine, good detailing to it if you can, you know, see it through the haze. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it does produce 600 kilonewtons of max thrust in vacuum, 320 on the max ISP using liquid fuel and oxidizer, and again, 2 degrees of gimbling. And, whoops, accidentally clicked the wrong thing there. And the last one we have is the Insight Upper Stage Orbital Engine, which we can pop right on there again with the particle effects. And this one has 200 max kilonewtons of thrust in vacuum, has a built-in decoupler, and uses liquid fuel and oxidizer. Now it actually does, in fact, go hand in hand with that engine right there. They fit into one another, and since they both have the particle effect, it actually it actually makes the particle effect more dense. So um yeah, it would really be nice to toggle that. <laughs> Now the next, we have nothing in command and control. Uh, we have one thing in structural, which is uh, the the launch pad. It's it's a full-size launch pad for the uh, inside mission. There we go. A bit low res on the textures, which is actually surprising considering the quality on the other parts, but still quite nice and is always cool to have just a gigantic launch pad for you to play with. There you are. You can uh, have some fun with that. Uh, next in the coupling, we have the fairing in sight, with a, which is, of course, a separator. Pop that on there. Excellent. There we go. We also have the lower, inside to lower decoupler. Another separator. There we are. And then finally the inside separator. Very small one. There it is. Which of course is for the, you know, the actual main inside lander up there. In payload, we have nothing. Aerodynamics, we have two different fairings, which, oh boy, we actually need a... Um, that one. Hold on. Hold on. I actually need to readjust some things. You go over there momentarily. All right, we'll pop that on, and you'll see that that had two uh, attachment points on either side, I should have mentioned earlier, because they, of course, go along with the fairing bits here. Yep, there we go. Oh, no, I had it for a second there. Oh, there it is. And, of course, we have a fairing for either side. There we are to fit the InSight mission in the interior. There we go. Perfect. 
And then in ground, nothing. In thermal, we do have the heat shield, which is where we start putting together some parts for this. And it's, you know, a heat shield. Uh, let's actually, so you can see it to pop it under. Oh, uh, you know what? Let's, uh, let's lose you. We no longer need you. I'll kind of pop it here for now and then show how it properly fits onto things here in a moment. <laughs> there we go, a heat shield. It's, it's a heat shield. You've seen many. Then in electrical, we have a couple of great ones. We have the Insight Cruise a solar panel, which is very cool. I do not have a good attachment point to attach it to here. Unfortunately, I need other parts for it, but solar panel. There we are. We then have, of course, the uh, solar arrays for Insight itself. There we are. We can pop that on and extend. And we, of course, have a left and right versions of them. There we go. And then finally, we have the solar panels for the Marco little CubeSats. Just these tiny, tiny little, tiny little solar panels. There it is. And they deploy. Oh, I actually have it a bit the wrong way. But there we go. A little tiny, very tiny little solar panel. I love it. Look at that thing. It's just, it's gorgeous. <laughs> Uh, I like the idea of a tiny little solar panel. It amuses me. And then we have the inside UHF antenna. Of course, we move on to communications. This, of course, fitting into the inside lander if we flip it around. Right there. That's where it goes. And then we have the Marco antennae, which if we kind of move it around a bit. There we go. Goes on to, of course, the Marco CubeSats. Perfect. And then in science, we have nothing because, of course, all the sciencey bits are in the lander itself. And then in utility, we have the uh, the cruise parachute for the inside lander and the inside cruise sort of encapsulated bit. So if we actually create a new ship real quick just to grab the inside lander, the uh, inside cruise is what, if, oh boy, zoom out and flip this baby around, it goes onto that top attachment point on the inside lander. The parachute then goes and attaches there, and that heat shield we had from earlier then, of course, attaches to the lower node that gets extended out from that cruise capsule, and there we go. That's the actual proper little insight uh, capsule for the mission. Very fun. Now let's actually head out into the world and take a look at the inside lander in all of its glory, just so you guys can get a good look at it, and then we'll take a look at the inside rocket, which thankfully the mod maker does include a craft file on the uh, page for the mod. Uh, it is a little bit awkward though, because it includes some mods he doesn't recommend you install, so <laughs> it'll still load though. But here is our lovely lander with our great little solar panels, the large list of different scientific experiments we can play with, and then of course our antennae that we can transmit data from there. It is just such a cool little lander, I very much do like this thing, it's just gorgeously built with a lot of great details. How could you not love this thing? But yes, that is the lander. Let's actually go and take a look at the rocket. Not really much to stare at with that. And let's load up of course, the inside mission. Yes, I know it has mods that I was not told to download, but yes, there it is in all of its glory. Attached, of course, to the giant launch pad. So let's go to launch and you'll notice if we launch right away, we'll be fine, but if we actually let it sit for a second on the launch pad, it starts getting a little wobbly. Now, once you actually do launch, the wobble leaves very quickly, so it, it's not too bad, but it is noticeable. It actually doesn't seem to be happening now. Hmm. Just my luck, of course, when I record the thing that I noticed several times before. It doesn't happen. But that's a good thing. Maybe it was just some random fluke. But there is uh, the oddity with that particle effect. I really wish I could toggle those. And hopefully, again, this is work in progress, so hopefully, perhaps, that'll get toggleable in the future. But let's actually go and launch this thing in 3, 2, 1. Lift off! Ooh, there's some wobble. Some wobble on release. But uh, not too bad, though. Not too bad, honestly. Easily recoverable. And there is our beautiful rocket sailing away. Now, I am actually going to cut... Well, we'll let it burn for a little bit longer so we get a bit more height. Because, well, I'm going to cut the engine a bit short. And so we can see the different stages. So let us cut the engine and watch the this little bit in here for when we get 
the little solid rocket booster fires to help it clear away. There we go. Fire our engines here. Which this engine, not very powerful. That's just the two engines on this uh, upper stage. But if we activate then that central engine with them, we actually get a fair bit more power and we'll stop falling down to our death and actually start going back up in the world again, which is always good. Now, uh, the next stage, of course, releases the fairings. There we are. They, of course, did have a little built-in uh, things, too, to launch them off. And we have our beautiful full lander system. You can actually see those uh, solar panels a bit better now that I couldn't attach earlier because, well, now they're attached properly. So we do have those. Not getting anything at the moment because they are, of course, facing down. But let's cut those engines. Release again. Oh, no. There we go. That's what I meant to do. Probably should have turned those engines all the way down. There we are. We then have sort of our uh, main sort of uh, cruise stage here. Very fun. We can, of course, then launch that. Ooh, explosions. Let's actually flip this baby around a bit. Drop the parachute for reasons. Then the heat shield and, of course, the engines on the inside lander. And there we go. Those are all the bits and bobs of insight. And if you did the mission properly, well, then... Yeah, you know, you'd have a good time. It actually works out all quite nicely. But we, of course, did do it in a very weird order. But it works! So that is the Insight mod. If you'd like to check it out for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for this episode. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode when, uh, hopefully... We'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one. Oh, I broke one of my two solar panels. Oh, well. Later, folks.